Here we're going to be looking at a partnership liquidation where we're terminating the business and distributing the assets using the right of offset here. So we're going to be looking at the right of offset and how it's used here. So for example here, partner B has a capital account and they have a deficit of $28,000 in the capital account here. That's the amount that they owe to the partnership. And then partner B has made a loan to the partnership for $10,000 here. So the partnership has a loan payable to partner B here for $10,000. And what we do with this right of offset is, is we close out this loan that's payable to partner B here and we transfer it over into their uh, partner B's capital account here. So we debit the loans payable for $10,000 and we credit or increase the capital account here for partner B by $10,000. So ultimately what we've done here is we've taken the deficit amount for partner B here from $28,000. We reduced it by $10,000. That was the loans payable to them and that reduction here gives them a balance here of $18,000 in their capital account. And that's what they owed to partnership here, partner B here. So what is this right of offset? here. The uh, right of offset here is for loans made by the partners to the partnership. So the loan with a credit balance, that is a loan that's payable to the partner here, must be offset against the partner's capital account. That's if there's a deficit in this capital account here. That's if the partner owes money to the partnership here. So the loan is treated as the partner's capital during the liquidation. It's transferred from the loans payable into their capital account here. Therefore, the loan is not paid back to the partner before the partner's capital account amount here. So let's go down and look at look at our ranking here of partnership liabilities and how this offset here sets aside this ranking here. So number one ranking here, accounts owed to creditors other than partners. They get paid first here, the creditors. Number two here, accounts owed to partners other than for capital and profit. That would be, that's would be like loans uh, that the uh, payable by the partnership that would be payable to the partner here, except for this right of offset. So if the partner has a deficit in their capital account, then we use this right of offset here. And then thirdly here, amounts owed to the partner's capital here. So that would be the third ranking. And then fourthly, the amounts owed to the partners as profits here. So without this right of offset here, partner B would have been paid for the loan of $10,000 before he paid down his capital deficit of $10,000. Instead, the loan amount was offset against this capital account here. So what we've done is we take this loan amount here from the number two ranking, we moved it into the partner's capital account, which is now has a number three ranking here. So without the right of offset, the partnership would have to recover assets paid to partner B for this loan uh, because it would have been paid first here uh, to pay down the partner B's capital deficit. So they would have received the loan amount here before their capital deficit was paid down here. Okay, let's look at applying the right of offset for personal assets that would be distributed assuming the uniform partnership act is applied here. So we're going to first look at at partner A here where they've got assets of 60,000 liabilities here of $30,000 and then they have a capital account here that has a credit balance here of $40,000 that's uh, the partnership owes them. So we have net assets here of $60,000 and then we would reduce that here by the, the personal liabilities here of $30,000. So the net amount here would be $30,000 that they have to distribute here in their assets here. So then we look here at partner B. That's the one that we have this right of offset with. So let's say they have assets here $44,000 and liabilities here of $42,000. And then we use this loan offset here. So we would subtract the $10,000 that we offset in this loan here against their beginning balance in our assets. And so we'd have a net amount here of uh, $34,000 for their net personal assets. And then we have the liability amount here of $42,000 that they owe here. So we would reduce our net personal assets here for partner B by $34,000. So we could take uh, $34,000 of this liability and reduce their personal assets here. So their fertile, further contribution to any deficit here would be zero amount and they have a zero balance here in their assets. And then they still have $8,000 sitting here in liabilities. So the $42,000 was split up here. $34,000 going to reduce the net personal assets and then $8,000 remains in the liability here. So let's look at it in terms of the 
the uh, partnership here. So uh, the liability of the partnership, that would have been reduced here by $10,000, so they owe nothing here. And then the uh, partner B's capital account here, remember it was at $28,000 deficit, and that was reduced here by the $10,000 that was loans payable to them. So they have $18,000 remaining uh, as a deficit or what they owe the partnership here in their capital account here. And then again, uh, A's capital account here was sitting at $40,000. So applying the right of offset, $10,000 was applied towards partners B's capital deficit here. Okay, now let's look at the case here where we, where we would not apply the right of offset here and how the personal assets would be distributed, again, assuming the Uniform Partnership Act here is applied. So looking at partner A here, they have net personal assets here of $60,000, and then we would subtract out the personal liabilities here of $30,000. So they have a balance here of $30,000 in their asset account here. And then again, their capital account would remain here at $40,000 a credit amount here. Now for partner B. They have, again, assets here of $44,000 and liabilities here of $42,000. Now, we're not applying this loan offset in this case that they're payable uh, from the partnership here for $10,000. So that's just not applied here. So they end up with net personal assets here of $44,000. And then we'd be subtracting out the personal liabilities here of $42,000. So they have $2,000 remaining in their asset account here. And that is what would be applied towards their capital deficit up here. So they had a capital deficit of $28,000 in their capital account here. And then that $2,000 remaining in their asset account would be applied to it. So they'd end up with $26,000 here as a deficit in their capital account here. And then uh, again, the partnership liability here for that $10,000 payable of a loan to a partner B remains here. So not applying the right of offset, $2,000 would be applied here towards partner B's capital deficit. So let's just go up here and look at our account here again for partner B, their capital account here. They had the deficit here of $28,000 and then uh, a debit amount here and then they would be credited $2,000 here for the contribution of capital deficit after paying the personal liabilities here. So the credit amount here of $2,000 would reduce their uh, deficit amount in their capital account here uh, by $2,000 or to $26,000 here. Now that loan payable here that is still due to partner B here. So the partnership still has a loan payable to partner B here. So let's just go and look at this, uh, uh, the compare here, this capital account, using the right of offset versus not using this right of offset. So capital account here for partner B, using the right of offset, they had a deficit amount here of 28,000, then that loan amount that was due to them from the partnership would be, uh, would reduce that deficit amount here from 28,000 by the $10,000 amount here to $18,000. Now, if we didn't apply this right of offset, uh, they, again, the deficit amount here was $28,000, and then they would only reduce that deficit amount here by $2,000. That was the contribution to capital deficit after paying those personal liabilities here. So that would only be reduced by $2,000, so they'd end up with a capital deficit here of $26,000. So the capital deficit here was $26,000 without using the right of offset, and then using the right of offset here, we had a capital deficit here of $18,000.